Hey, good morning, everybody. Hey, we're in the uh, home stretch now for Dell EMC World, so thanks very much for attending. We're going to spend the next 45 minutes or so talking about the partnership between Dell and Citrix and focusing on Zen Desktop and the, the delivery of virtual desktops and how Dell and Citrix have teamed together for actually uh, the past decade or so in developing uh, user experiences through desktop virtualization. By now, you've probably seen the exhibit area. You've probably sat in some of these sessions. This one's going to focus specifically on the partnership between Dell and Citrix. Uh, with me, uh, by the way, my name is Dan O'Farrell. Um, I'm from the product marketing team in the part of Dell called Cloud Client Computing. We're the part of Dell that focuses entirely on desktop virtualization. It's kind of our reason for living. And we work a lot with Citrix. And with me is Rick Dellinger, principal uh, solution architect for Citrix. Uh, so the focus for today will be a little bit of a high-level summary. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about, Rick's going to talk a bit, little bit about how we got here, uh, some of the recent advancements uh, in Zen Desktop and how uh, Dell has made some uh, cool new uh, appliances and other platforms to deliver Zen Desktop with great simplicity and ease. And then we'll give you a little bit of a peek into what we're thinking about going forward. So um, let's get started. Hopefully my clicker is working. And, and there it is, okay. So, um, you know, one of the reasons Zen Desktop and the delivery of desktop, uh, virtual desktops is becoming uh, more and more popular is because it matches very well with how many of us are now working nowadays. Uh, we, Dell took a, a poll of a number of our customers and some of these statistics are, are somewhat telling. Uh, over half the people polled uh, said that they actually um, use personal devices to get their work done. Uh, at some point in the day or other. I mean, I've noticed a lot of us even in this room glancing down at our smartphones. It's probably tied into our email system. Uh, this is an open network in this building. Uh, down in the lobby, we've got all kinds of people kind of catching up and, and doing some work in between sessions and activities. So it's not uncommon at all to use personal devices now as a complement to whatever you might be using as your primary work vehicle. Um, more than half the people polled regularly use more than one device, and I would submit that I suspect just about everybody in this room has at least two or three devices that they use. Uh, I've got my laptop and my smartphone. A lot of people are carrying tablets around. So there's now a variety of, of devices that people want to be able to use to access their work. Um, almost 90% of the people polled believe at some point someday tablets will replace laptops. Don't know if that's actually going to happen because a lot of this depends on, on the kind of content you might want to create versus consume. But certainly laptops are becoming much, much, uh, tablets are becoming much more commonplace and I've seen a lot of people walking around with them getting stuff done. Um, about two thirds of the people polled um, said they do some work from home. And, and that's probably even now a little bit low. I bet it's probably more like 80%. I know a lot myself. I'll get up early in the morning, do some work, uh, catch up a little bit in the evening. Uh, a lot of people are working from home. A lot of people are working entirely from home. Uh, at Dell, we have people who are classified as remote workers whose primary workplace now is home. Uh, and in fact, the way companies are now building out workspaces for their people is contemplating that. You know, Silicon Valley is kind of going through kind of another secondary resurgence, but you don't see a lot of new building. What's happening is companies are now hoteling cubicles. A lot of people are working kind of split between home and the office. You don't necessarily anymore need to map out footprint for employees, as, as was the case as recently as 10 to 15 years ago. Um, a lot of people are spending, uh, this is on a per week basis, I think it's actually even more now, a uh, couple hours in public places, whether it's the lobby in this building, Starbucks across the street, airports, et cetera. We're getting a lot of work done um, outside of the home and office in public areas, as long as there's a Wi-Fi type of connectivity. About half the people polled uh, said they will check their work email or take work calls after business hours, which is not surprising. And then finally, what's a little bit surprising is almost 80% of the people polled, even in regulated industries like healthcare, uh, finance, government, retail, et cetera, they will use public services for things like file sharing. So that can raise a little bit of a concern about security, but the fact of the matter is, is that this is very complementary to the way people are now living and working. So the, the modern workforce needs flexibility to get their job done, right? Uh, you've got to be able to accommodate those who want to be highly mobile, who want to work off hours, 
who want to be able to be productive in multiple places. So if you want to go to your kid's soccer game, you're not sacrificing anything. And in fact, you can glance down at your email as long as the missus isn't uh, walk, watching, gives you a hard time for doing work while you're at your kid's game. So for virtual desktops and for Zen Desktop in particular, uh, you know, the, we, we see at Dell as the primary driver is security and content protection number one. Uh, you know, by sequestering apps and content in the secure data center, uh, security is never trivial, but by placing everything in one spot, it does allow organizations to get their arms around it, and it's certainly less of a burden to worry about securing one location as opposed to hundreds or thousands where you've got independent desktops running. Um, there was that well, well chronicled uh, situation in New York City, right, where the guy from Goldman Sachs left his laptop in the back of a cab and the content on his hard disk was compromised. That doesn't happen if you've got, in this case, a mobile thin client or you've got this model of, 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 of virtual desktops where you're housing everything in the secure data center. Empowering the workforce, allow people to work anywhere they want. All you need is the agent on your device, whether it's a tablet or that laptop. By imaging and patching um, systems, uh, uh, virtually, in one spot, you can vastly reduce the overhead on IT, make life much, much easier on those guys. And then the byproduct of all, is that all of this is you can really get a much better handle on your costs. So lots of good reasons to do this. I'm not going to go into nauseating detail on all these stats. What this really says is Dell has a lot of experience in this area. Um, I was with a company called Wise Technology. We were acquired by Dell about four years ago. Wise had been working closely with Citrix for about 10 years prior to that. Wise developed its first zero client working with Citrix to deliver a great ICA HDX experience to the end user. So we have an army of people who know this stuff inside and out, who have been working with VDI and with Citrix in particular for the better part of the last decade. In fact, the guy who, who invented the thin client and owns the patent on it is still with Wise and now Dell, a guy by the name of Jeff McNaught is my boss. He actually worked with a gentleman named um, Kirk Schwebke to develop the first definition for a, a patent uh, for a thin client. And we developed our first zero client for Citrix working with Citrix. So we've got a lot of experience here. And some of the, be the benefits of this, for example, with a zero client for Citrix, you power that button on, and within about six or seven seconds, you got your full desktop experience right in front of you. You don't go through that typical, all the background processes running on a typical PC to be, to be able to get to your work. Just one example. But anyway, yeah, all these stats just mean we know our stuff, we've been doing it for a long time, and we've been doing it with Citrix longer than anybody. So let's talk a little bit about how we got here. And I'm going to hand this over to Rick, because you're going to take a little trip down memory lane here. But uh, this is important. Thanks. Yeah, certainly. So I'm going to actually back this up for a quick second. Uh, I appreciate the introduction earlier. My name is Rick Dellinger. I'm a, a, a technologist, not a salesperson. So roll with me a little bit there. Um, so this, this topic is actually kind of near and dear to my heart. You know, you can tell, I'm sure, by looking at me that I've been around for a little while, right? I got, I got, I got plenty of gray hairs, a little bit of a sagging paunch, uh, some young daughters at home that are about to finish up with, uh, with high school and move on in their lives. But the relationship between Dell and Citrix actually goes back into the, the time when I started my career in this industry. So back into like the 1995-ish time frame. So the first output was actually something I got my hands on and sold and did some great stuff with, a product called the Wise WinTerm, Windows Terminal. And hey, we had some fantastic options to choose from then. You want black and white or do you want color? Right? It was a, a pretty crazy time. Anyway, Citrix has been obviously in this space. Citrix innovated and invented this space in, in most people's eyes, uh, going back starting in the, the 89 time frame. And as you'd imagine, for a company that's been around for a long time, Citrix had to go through and, and, and reinvent itself a little bit over, over that time. So to kind of tie this, uh, uh, the new Citrix, the Citrix of today in, I'll, I'll share a little bit of a, a, a personal story. So, you know, as, as I mentioned, I got a couple of uh, daughters in high school. They're just about working their way through. And that, along with, you know, the, the staunch realization that my body's not elastic anymore and I've got to start taking care of it, 
you know, like, like many people at, at my stage of life, if you will, I've kind of gone through a, a little bit of what some people might call a, a midlife crisis here. You know, my midlife crisis didn't end up in, you know, me getting hair implants and investing in a, in a Corvette. Um, but my midlife crisis did bring me back, ground me on what's important in life and, and help me focus on, you know, a direction uh, and uh, a purpose in life and a, and a mission to make a difference. Now Citrix, it's, uh, interestingly enough, Citrix has gone through some very similar changes here over the course of the last five or six years. You know, there was a period of, of time there where Citrix was, uh, like many companies in that, that time, they were big on acquisitions. And what a lot of people uh, uh, really thought, felt, and saw from the outside, including the Elliott Management Group, which uh, some of you may have, have uh, had some experience with their somewhat invasive techniques when they get involved with a company. Anyway, Citrix had gotten a little bit of a, of a bad rap for kind of losing its way. And uh, the next slide actually helped kind of illustrate that a little bit. So Citrix is a multi-product company, right? We've, we've actually got quite a few different products out in the marketplace, all with some measure of focus. But our core product is Zen App and Zen Desktop. And if you take a look here, whoops, I want forward, not backward. So if you take a look here, this is uh, one particular slide that I pulled out to, to illustrate a little bit of the transition of Citrix and its refocusing on what's important. So this highlights a few of the, the releases, kind of the primary announcements and releases uh, in the evolution of Zen App and Zen Desktop over time. And you can see there was, a, there was a period there where you could pretty easily buy the argument that Citrix had lost its focus. But as you notice the last couple of years, and as I step this slide forward into 2016, and this is actually a few months old. This is, this is prior to the latest release that we've done that brought a whole new level of innovation to market. Um, Citrix has, has gone through a similar transition and really found its focus again. It shed some of the businesses that were non-core. Uh, it recentered itself on the things that are important, the success of our customers, for example, the experience that we provide jointly with you to your, your end users. Anyway, it's a, a, a new Citrix today that's very, very focused. And we're on a mission to deliver uh, applications and data securely. So we see our core mission and our place in the marketplace, not to be everything to everyone, which is something Citrix could have been accused of that in the, in the past. But we're really all about connecting people and the organization and the things to the data and to the applications that they need to get their jobs done, provide value back to the business, and have time left over to, to have a life, if you will. So our, our guiding principles, you know, Citrix was the, the first out of the bag with this any, any, any message, right? Any application on any device over any kind of a network. And that's expanded a bit over the years now to adding any cloud. So from an infrastructure perspective, Citrix is all about providing you some choices. Choose the right infrastructure, choose the right device type to deliver the apps, uh, choose the right deployment method. But also point out that we've definitely shifted to a, more of a people first mindset. And if you've noticed the evolution of the user interfaces that we've provided to users over the last four or five years, uh, you can see the, the shift. There's definitely been a major emphasis on the user experience, trying to improve the user experience, provide the best possible user experience. Uh, we also believe that security is, is extremely important. Security is built in from the ground up. It's one of the key guiding principles behind every product we release. And just like in the past, the desktop used to be the, the thing that we would always focus on delivering. Now the desktop in most people's minds is a, a Windows desktop, right? So fundamentally, we believe that that whole paradigm has changed. The desktop is a vehicle to consume apps and to interact with applications, but the workspace is really the, the new desktop, the desktop for the next generation. And the workspace travels and evolves. It takes on different attributes depending on the, the capabilities of the device the user is in front of, the networks that they might be connected to, whether they're on-premises or, or off-prem at home. 
uh, or even you know hanging out at the the soccer game as as Dan had mentioned a little bit earlier. So our strategy is really to to take these different components that we see as the the critical core aspects of delivering applications and data securely and take these components and deliver the best integrated technology services for the secure delivery of applications and data. And I'll point out there, you know, we've got four key core product lines, if you will, and the lines between those are blending substantially today as we focus on the, the end user experience and delivering new and innovative services. But those are the app and desktop virtualization, enterprise mobility management with our, our Zen Mobile uh, family of products, enterprise file sharing and sync, the share file family of products, uh, and then also networking with our Netscaler family of products. But again, just to reemphasize that any app, any cloud, any device uh, is very, very key and core to our DNA. So why Citrix and Dell? You know, I mentioned that this relationship goes back a long ways. Uh, so we started this, this whole thing in 95. Uh, but what you'll see, and I'm on the Alliances side, right? So I actually work with Dell uh, here recently. I'm back at Citrix after an 11 year hiatus, where I actually, uh, it was with Citrix back in the early days when we were evangelizing. Um, but we're doing a lot of work together to innovate and bring some new technologies, new capabilities, new price points, new consumption mechanisms uh, to the table together. Uh, these solutions that we're looking at are, 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 you know, we're looking for ways to innovate and bring the best of the capabilities that we both bring to the table. And I think what you'll see here in a moment as Dan talks through some of the, the output, some of the products and the offerings that have come from our, our most recent uh, collaborative efforts together, I think you'll see that we've, we've done some pretty darn cool things together. And I'll tell you as a guy that's in the middle of this, uh, and, and pretty darn focused guy, we're gonna do some really cool things moving forward. Uh, and also from the engagement perspective. You know, Dell's got a heck of a lot of folks that know Citrix and know Citrix very well. We've got a lot of long-standing relationships in the marketplace together. And uh, when the two come together, we provide some fantastic solutions and generate some great results. So let me go ahead and hand it back to Mr. Dan now to uh, take us through what we've got out there today. Thanks, Rick. Yeah, you know, um, Rick, the first adjective he used was secure delivery, right? So one thing that we're working on very closely with, with Citrix is we want to make it as easy as possible to stand up platforms to deliver these workspaces that Rick was talking about. But what's paramount is it has to be ultra secure, right? So our, our big focus is on security and ease. And the, where those two intersect, we think we've got some killer solutions. Um, one example of this is the currently shipping Dell appliance for WISE for Citrix. So we use the WISE branding within Dell for all of our VDI-focused products. So this is a, a platform which is really focused on, on three things. Number one, at the top, to make it as easy as possible for organizations to stand up a Citrix-based virtual desktop infrastructure. So no longer do you have to fear the perceived complexity or the time it's going to take to do this, or you know, how do I have to tweak my back end? Uh, tweak my back end. That sounds like a. You know, I, yeah. We were talking. We were talking about aging. Yeah, yeah. I tweaked my back end earlier this morning, getting out of bed. So, uh, but anyway, no. The, the idea here is we want to we want to kind of allay a lot of those traditional fears that have caused some, pe some people to be hesitant to move toward this model. Because I think most people can appreciate the security gains, the IT efficiency gains, the mobility enablement gains of going virtual where it makes sense. But there has always been this feeling that, well, I just don't have the IT staff for it. I don't have the, the wherewithal to do it. But we're working a lot. I'll show you an example of this product and how we make it so easy. The other thing is we want to make sure that um, it's designed to deliver uh, you know, a, a decent amount of virtual desktops. Start small and cost effectively, yet scale out in an incremental, highly predictable fashion. And then third, we want to make it so that you don't have to be a VDI guru to do this. Um, in fact, um, we would submit that anybody who has had experience configuring Windows desktops has more than enough expertise and more than enough technical savvy to bring this thing up and, run, and get it up and running. So let's take a look. 
Um, the product is inherently secure and very uh, compliant. It's got a very good uh, uh, price per user when you take a look at the capacity of the system, the price of the box. We wanted to make sure that it could met, meet those two uh, basic uh, requirements. Uh, out of the box, you can be up and running within a couple of hours. It's wizard based. So we've really reduced the time uh, to, to plan, implement, and deploy VDI with this product. We make it easy for, uh, for the IT generalist so you don't have to have a, a VDI expert on hand to do this. And it delivers really, really good performance to your people, because that's what it's all about. It's all about delivering apps, workspaces, as Rick called it, to your, to your people. And it does all four of these things. Um, the packaging, the physical packaging, is it's a 13G Dell PowerEdge server, the R730. Um, and it's, it's it's basically the, the foundation for this, and it's got all the CPU horsepower, um, the necessary storage, type of storage necessary for what we call up to about 350 basic task or knowledge workers. All right, so this is for, for most of us, I dare call myself a knowledge worker. Those of us who are doing, running a basic gamut of business applications, this product gives you more than enough capability for hundreds of users in a single device. Um, based on the type of sessions you want to configure, 340 shared sessions or 245 uh, full-blown virtual desktops. And you can configure and mix and match those within a single one of these appliances. If you want to grow above that, you merely add another one. So it's kind of a building block modular approach. So what this does for you is it takes all the mystery out of geez, when do I have to add more CPU horsepower? When do I have to add more memory? You know, when do I need to add more networking? This is prescribed. It's a lot like a prescription at the, at the pharmacy, right? You hand on your prescription, they give you the pills. They're set to do something very, very specific with a very specific dosage. This is the same thing. You pop that in there, you've got 340 shared users. Put another one, you've got 680. You know what it's going to cost, so now you can budget and plan for this. So, and for small to mid-sized companies, it's a great way to dip their toe in the water so I can do a proof of concept without a huge capital outlay, right? So it's, it's very, very low risk to say, hey, let's give VDI a shot. We've heard of it. Uh, we hear it's got some good things it can do for us. So you don't have to go through this complex, how do I sequester off part of my data center to do this anymore? Um, scales from small to large, from you know, 50 to 150 or 300 users and just grow it out from there. It's easy to order. It's a single SKU appliance, right? So just order it, you get the box, and it's already configured to deliver the Zen desktop um, on, top of the, uh, on top of the physical platform itself. Um, so yeah, about 435 users, when you look at all the licensing built into it on a per user basis, it's very, very, very cost effective. And uh, you know, it's a great way to kind of start out and then grow from there. So that's called the Citrix Appliance for Wise. Now, it doesn't stop there. Uh, Rick mentioned we've got some, some plans in the next upcoming year. Uh, all I can say is, is keep an ear out for, for, for more coming from Citrix and Dell. This concept is a start. Uh, we have some plans for doing some uh, really cool follow-on capabilities to this. But anybody who wants to get started now with VDI based on Zen Desktop, this is a great platform for them to do that. And of course, it's Citrix ready. Um, now, one thing that makes this really nice is that once I plug this in and I, I set up my IP address and default gateway and that kind of stuff, and, and I do some basic configuration, you go into a wizard. And by the time you exit that four-step wizard, you will have brought up hundreds if, or 50 or how many you want full-blown VDI uh, uh, users users on, a, on your virtual desktop infrastructure. So this can be done in a matter of a couple of hours. So instead of days or weeks, you can stand up an entire vir desktop virtualization infrastructure uh, in a morning with your IT person who's been configuring Windows desktops. Um, so we think that this is somewhat of a breakthrough. This really is now, this allows uh, the non-expert, it allows smaller companies, small to mid-sized organizations to reap the security <clears throat> IT streamlining and mobility uh, benefits of VDI for themselves. <clears throat> Typical use cases, um, 
you know, it's, it's the usual suspects. You know, if you think about the organizations that are most interested in going virtual to deliver these workspaces, it's schools, healthcare organizations, financial institutions, retail institutions, those organizations with whom security and content protection and control are paramount, right? Educational organizations, smaller companies in some of those verticals who don't have the big IT team or <clears throat> you know, an army of VDI experts, and organizations who want and have been thinking about VDI but have hesitated, now they can do a proof of concept or a pilot with one of these little uh, appliances and test it out for themselves, experience it for themselves, right? So these are the primary targets for this. Now we've got other platforms that allow you to scale quite massively if you wish. So these are more kind of higher end for the more mid to, mid to large size companies. Um, the Dell XC appliance, web scale conversion appliance powered by Nutanix. This is a massively scalable building block engineered solution uh, where it's powered by the Nutanix prison in, prism, in, prison, prism interface. Um, and again, it runs on a, a Dell 2U hardware platform. You start out with three of these in a cluster because you want to build in that cross reliability. But then as you want to add hundreds of more users, you just pop in more modules, more these 2U platforms. And this can scale up to many, many thousands, actually tens of thousands of users if you wish. So this is kind of our high-end solution because um, it's very sophisticated. It's got a great user interface. But again, um, you know how many users you can satisfy with each one of these modules. So it takes away a lot of that mystery and guesswork, uh, especially as it applies to performance and budget. Um, it comes on different versions of, of the hardware. The most popular one is our 730, but users have choice. You can actually even use what, what looks like a tower platform for this. Um, we run it with vi various hypervisors. The focus, obviously, for today is, is the Citrix environment. But in many cases, you can have, if you've got VMware running in the background, you'll run Zen, Des Zen Desktop or Zen App on top of that. And this can handle all of those. Um, you can handle high-end graphics because you can put in the NVIDIA virtual GPU cards in this, the K1, the K2, and the M60. So if you've got high-end power users, if you will, doing design or CAD CAM type work, you can configure part of this with the M60 cards, for example, to give them all the graphics horsepower they need to open up as many windows as they want on their workstation or on their thin client, if it's a high-end one, uh, to get that CAD CAM type of simulation and modeling work done. Um, we propose that it's about six times faster time to value compared to traditional VDI before you can get up and running because, again, it's this, it's this modular uh, appliance platform type of uh, form factor. Um, use cases, enterprises looking for predictable costs and performance, and I think that's the big kicker with these appliances. It's predictable cost and performance. You can actually now budget for this. You can f figure out if I've got an M&A activity coming up, I know what these appliances can handle, and I can actually budget for that and be ready for it, and, and move very quickly, by the way. Um, if you want to get up and running very quickly, and then all of those who um, want to basically serve uh, virtually uh, enterprises who have all kinds of different endpoints. Because again, you know, the endpoint doesn't have to be a thin or a zero client, which we would recommend, by the way, from a security standpoint. But if you just bought a bunch of PCs and they haven't depreciated, by all means, you can use those as well. Or tablets or anything else. As Rick mentioned earlier, the whole idea here is to deliver that workspace on whatever form factor your people wish to use. So that's the XC appliance. That's our high-end solution for delivering Zen Desktop. Now we also have um, what we call reference architectures. Uh, and this is where, these are white papers essentially. Uh, and they're like a couple hundred pages long. So it's not, you don't curl up at night and read it. But uh, if you want to basically uh, initiate this on your own and build it yourself, and there are a lot of IT teams who take great pride in their ability to do that, we furnish you with a reference architecture, and then you can basically build out whether it's a rack or a half rack or as, as, as many users as you want and really fine tune it on a per user, per department uh, basis. So this, is, this allows you to get even more fine tuned, takes a little bit longer to build out, 
And it really depends on your philosophy. We've run into IT teams that take great pride in their ability to do this. So we furnish them with the reference architecture, and off they go. The key thing here is that Zen Desktop has been verified and tested on all of the Dell platforms. So when you build this out based on the reference architecture, you can rest assured that the outcome of this is something that's already supported and verified to work great between both Citrix uh, and Dell. Um, you know, the relationship is such that we meet regularly. We sit side by side on a regular monthly basis and so oftentimes we'll meet on a weekly basis since on some of the kind of the cool upcoming things we're working. So Dell and Citrix work very, very closely together and these products are the byproduct of that close collaboration. It's not like, you know, we get some code from Citrix and we do our own thing and we come out with a product. They help us all the way through right to the end, end, end of the uh, development process. Uh, for virtualized graphics, we work pretty closely with NVIDIA. They're another key technology partner. Uh, these vGPU cards, uh, we, you can put them on all of our appliances uh, to add extra horsepower. They offload the central processing from the system, and they give your power users all the juice they need uh, to, work, uh, to work their magic in their application sets. So if they're running Dassault or Siemens or Autodesk, you can run that on these appliances or inside the reference architectures. And we take advantage of the latest GPU uh, uh, technology from NVIDIA, and that's integrated into the Citrix environment, and the three companies do all kinds of cross-testing to ensure that. Speaking of high-end power users, uh, we do have another appliance, because in a lot of companies you'll have those designers are kind of a little lunatic fringe working off in the corner and they're kind of a little separate group and they don't talk to IT. Okay, so that's fine. So what we can do for those groups is we have an appliance, it's called the Precision Appliance for, for WISE and it's based on our Precision Workstation technology where it in itself is another one of these appliances and it can support up to 32 workstation class workspaces. So think about it. One choice would be to offer 32 people expensive individual workstations or buy one of these appliances, put it in your data center, give them connectivity, and they can use a high-end thin client or a PC to get to their work. So you can save a lot of dough just on your endpoints. But the other advantage of this is that they are no longer tethered to a device. So you can have people working in remote locations. You can have different work groups. You can have a design team in India, one in Ireland, one in the US. They can now collaborate together at the same time. You don't have to send those giant files between continents because basically everything is safely kept in the data center where, by the way, you've got disaster recovery and, by the way, you've got automatic backups. So now that the, these design teams can really collaborate together as a single team with this type of technology. And this, you, this takes advantage of the uh, M60 and the K1 and K2 cards from NVIDIA. So uh, we talk end-to-end -end a lot at Dell. We've worked very closely with Citrix. Uh, and you know, as Rick was saying, it actually goes back a couple decades. It's been over 20 years now, uh, back to the wind term days. But we developed our first thin and zero client with Citrix. And we believe the endpoint's important. You can certainly use a tablet. You can use a PC. Uh, you can use your device of choice, which is, which is a great liberty to have. But we would submit that for ultimate security, because security is very important, especially if you want to protect critical IP, a thinner zero client is the best way to go. And by the way, these devices are extremely efficient as well, and they're self-managed. So there are multiple benefits of this approach. And a lot of our customers will have a mix. They'll have some thinner zero clients, and they'll have traditional PCs. But um, you know, we have three flavors of these devices. You can see them downstairs in the exhibit area. Small, medium, large, good, better, best, economy, mainstream, and high end. Um, Dell kind of groups their products this way as we do with the thin clients. Um, but we've got the 3000 is the economical version, which I would say would probably be more than enough capability for most of us in this room. If you're just running your basic office apps, uh, the 3000 model of our thin client, which starts at about 250 bucks, uh, is more than enough to, give, to, to make you very, very productive. The 5000 series gives you a lot more performance. So if you are doing some media, you are doing some kind of high-end graphics, that'll take care of that. And remember, you know, the thin client is doing nothing more than painting pixels, right? The, the heavy lifting is happening in the data center, but you still need some local horsepower to be able to paint multiple windows of high-end graphics, and that's where that extra capacity really helps. 
Um, and then we have the 7000 series. Now, we do have endpoints designed specifically for Citrix, specifically to deliver a great Zen desktop user experience. The 3010 and 3020 can be configured as zero clients for Citrix. And by that, what I mean is when you power those things on, it goes to a self-test, it brings up TCP IP, and then it runs HDX, and that's all it does. So it's a really dumb device, and I'm complimenting it when I say that. So all it does is talk HDX. From that device, all you can do is attach to the back end and, and, and have your Citrix experience. Uh, there's no local OS running on it. Therefore, it has no attack surface. Therefore, it's virus resistant. And that's why about half of the thin and zero clients we sell are based on this model. Because uh, people love the idea that they no longer have to worry about getting hit on the endpoint. A virus literally cannot hit it because there's nothing there to go after. Um, we have a zero client for Citrix called the 5010. Uh, this is more high powered multi-core AMD processor in there. So if you want to do some advanced graphics on that one, you can still do that in a pure HDX environment. That product is also packaged in an all-in-one, and that's called the 5040. So that includes our ThinOS virus-resistant operating system. It also supports unified communications. We were the first working with Citrix to provide this capability on a proprietary bulletproof operating system. So you can run Skype for Business on this, multimedia, et cetera. It's a very attractive all-in-one. Some companies like that idea, especially maybe for like customer-facing receptionists and clerks and stuff like that. They want the back to look as good as the front. Um, so yeah, we've got a number of endpoints that are designed specifically for and tested and verified with Citrix. So let's talk a little bit about security. I mentioned ThinOS as a virus-resistant operating system. We think that's really, really important. Uh, we have a lot of customers who say that they really are happy that they are out of the endpoint security management business. They only now have to focus on what's going on in the data center. Um, ThinOS itself, uh, we've done a lot of testing with Citrix. Every time we come out, every time there's a new version of the receiver, we immediately test it and verify it on ThinOS and vice versa. So um, you can always rest assured that the latest features in the Citrix receiver very quickly show up on the latest version of, of ThinOS. And ThinOS runs on across a variety of our endpoints. So whether it's an entry model or a high end, you can get this ThinOS operating system on it. And it is virus resistant. There's nothing for a virus to hit. So what about Windows? Um, a lot of our thin clients and a lot of customers will choose a Windows embedded thin client, oftentimes to support a wide variety of peripherals that maybe ThinOS doesn't yet support. Maybe they're using System Center and it's a company uh, doctrine to make sure that every endpoint device is manageable by, by System Center as a, as a Windows footprint. So Windows Embedded will oftentimes be included on our thin clients. Um, and oftentimes people will do this because maybe you can't, maybe all your apps aren't published or maybe you can't virtualize everything. I mean, we have some customers who are still running Fortran programs that were written 35 years ago and they're still doing, you know, fine. But those, those programs, they'll attach to directly or through a VPN. So they want to have a little version of Windows running on that desktop for that purpose. So what we've done is in that case, we've come up with two new products to further protect because security is so important to us. This one on the right hand side is called Dell Data Protection Threat Defense. And this is software and it's optional. You don't have to have it, but you can load this software onto any Windows based machine, a full blown PC, one of these Windows embedded thin clients. It even runs on uh, Macs. And what this does is it is anti-malware, antivirus software that is not dependent on signatures. It uses this proactive behavioral model of protecting the device. Uh, it's based on years of machine learning and artificial intelligence. Uh, the best way, uh, bear with me, is through an analogy. All right, so imagine a giraffe. Long legs, big long neck, spots horns, that thing on the end of its tail, I don't, know, I don't know what you call that. A giraffe has a very distinct look. Similar to this is when a file is preparing to execute and it calls out to the CPU for resources, there's an expected behavior of that file as it preps to execute. So the way the technology works is it takes a million little snapshots of that file as it's getting ready to execute. 
not unlike taking a million little pictures of parts of a giraffe. So if I've taken a million little pictures of a giraffe, I see part of a spot, part of a hoof, part of its ear, part of that horn thing, and about, after about 40,000 looks, I see what looks like part of a zebra stripe. It's, it's, it doesn't belong there. I already know that it should be looking like a giraffe at this point. Now I'm seeing something that's an anomaly. Per policy, I sequester it, I quarantine it, I knock it out. This, this technology works the same way. It knows what files should look like as they prepare to execute. And whenever it sees something that's a little bit off, based on the policies that you set with the software, you can stop it in its tracks. So because of this, it doesn't rely on signatures. It's behavioral based. And it's been proven to be over 99% effective in thwarting any kind of virus or malware before it can execute. Um, so we think this is the way to stop viruses. We don't think signatures is the way it's you know, shutting the barn door after the horses have run out. So this is very, very um, effective for all kinds of malware, uh, you know, ransomware, any kind of threat on the periphery, because that's where most attacks happen in networks. And then on the other side, we can do the same thing on the Windows virtual desktop that's running in the data center, right? Because Windows is the biggest target for hackers. Now I've protected the endpoint. I can literally do the same thing, use the same technology to protect that virtual desktop while it's running. Because as long as Windows is running someplace, all a virus needs is a little crack in the door to get in. And then it can permeate throughout your organization. Also, the version on the left includes advanced encryption and authentication because it's sitting inside the data center. So, so we, all, we also want to protect the data that's at rest. So this is optional. They're both optional products. But uh, for, if you want thin OS-like security on Windows Embedded, in case you've chosen Windows Embedded because you might need it in some cases, we can give that to you. So, um, you know, one stop shop, you know, just because you have a lot of stuff and it's one stop, one stop, I mean, that doesn't make it any better, right? But we believe we've got best in class components, 13G servers, uh, you know, great storage, especially now with EMC, uh, great networking, great technology from close partners like Citrix packaged together and then supported by, our, by Dell and our partners. Uh, we think it, it, you know, that's, that's a great way to move to VDI. And then with these appliance platforms, that journey can be shortened dramatically and made much simpler. So companies who've been standing on the edge kind of thinking about it can now give it a shot and, and learn for themselves what the value is of going virtual with your desktops. Um, you know, we've got a global network of partners. Um, you know, we can manage this for you, if you will. So if you want to have a hybrid model where you go on-prem, Dell or one of our partners can actually manage that infrastructure for yourself. We also offer it as a service, as do some of our partners. So if all you want to do is buy your endpoints, we can give you this as a cloud-based service as well. So whatever, whatever works for you, um, we can do it. And in, in the case of Citrix, obviously, we can deliver that Zen desktop-based workspace uh, to your, your variety of users <clears throat> with the right endpoint to fit their need. So a little bit, I'm going to hand it back to Rick real quick, because uh, Rick can give us a little example of, um, of where we're going to go next. Thank you, sir. All right. So as you've hopefully you've gathered, we've got a lot of work that's built up to this point, a lot of great products that you can leverage together to solve some real world problems, get some real world value. But now let's kind of shift a, a little bit forward. Let's see if we can't uh, kind of tip, tip our hand a little bit, if you will, at some of the direction where I think you'll see us doing some uh, fantastic and joint innovation. So if I was to really uh, try and put it to words in very short order, I'd say what we're going to be doing is raising the bar substantially. So you'll see us make some serious improvements in uh, simpl simplicity, manageability, in the, the experience that we provide for not just the end user, but also the administrator who's got to keep the, the systems fed and running over time. Uh, the predictability of the, the class of service and the user experience, predictability of cost. Uh, and also, I amp amping things up, taking things up to a whole nother level on the security front as well. So if I go back and I, I pulled back our, our strategy statement a little bit, because I wanted to put it back in front of you here, uh, one more time, you know, our strategy is to really to build the best integrated technology services stack to securely deliver apps and data, right? 
And the way we'll be delivering that, kind of a key and central element to this whole thing and, and the future of Citrix is this thing called Citrix Cloud. Now I need to, I need to clarify a couple things because when people hear Citrix Cloud, one of the first things they think is, oh, you guys are building your own data centers and running your own data centers now? So let's see, you've been a product company building products and supporting products and now all of a sudden you're telling me that you're gonna be the best at running and managing a data center. Right. Well, I'm happy to tell you that that's actually not what Citrix is doing with Citrix Cloud. I personally find it a little bit annoying. We don't make this very clear to people. You know, you go out, like if you look at our earnings announcement yesterday, which blew, blew the, the analysts away and the market away. They were very thrilled with it. We overperformed. Um, but when we say Citrix Cloud, people immediately think infrastructure as a service. Oh, you want me to run my stuff up on your stuff? What the heck? So I'd like to point out that this is not public cloud. Citrix Cloud is not public cloud. We're not trying to be an Amazon, AWS, or GCP, or a soft layer. We're not trying to do a vCloud Air E kind of a thing. We don't expect and, uh, that, that we're the best at running data centers by any stretch. However, we are very, very focused and we would go toe to toe with anybody in saying that we are the best at the secure delivery of apps and data. So what Citrix Cloud is, is a cloud native application. Right, so you start thinking about cloud native application. You start think, uh, uh, well one, leveraging of public cloud services and the scale and the reach and availability. Leveraging of DevOps uh, deployment and management techniques. Uh, agile development processes. Uh, evergreen technology stacks. Predictive analytics. Citrix Cloud is much more cleanly thought of as the control plane. Right, so this is, our, this is our, our cloud native application stack. This is our control plane. This is the place and the, the core place where we're gonna be delivering on the next generation. This is how we're gonna be raising the bar. So uh, it's important to, to point out that with Citrix Cloud, it's not an all-in thing. You can still totally go out there today and, and buy our products in a traditional manner license them in a perpetual manner, stand them up in your data center behind completely locked doors, and we'll completely, we'll completely support that option for you. However, we do believe that there's substantial value in being able to take away some of the, the management costs, some of the infrastructure costs even, uh, associated with consuming these services and delivering a high quality experience and high value to your customers and to your business. So we manage and operate this stuff on Citrix Cloud. This infrastructure runs like many of the other applications and services that you consume both on a business and a, and a consumer level. So the, the services that we're leveraging are, are cloud-based. They're running up in AWS and on Azure. Uh, you may have caught that we did, we did uh, do a substantial, like groundbreaking re-up in our relationship with Microsoft here recently. So I don't know if any of y'all understand or have followed the Azure Remote App technology. That was Microsoft's first effort at delivering uh, applications from the cloud, leveraging remote desktops, remote application publishing. Uh, so one of the things that came out of that is they're, they're actually sunsetting that product and transitioning all those customers over to a jointly developed service that we're currently calling Zen App Express. So uh, they recognized that they weren't able to do it on the scale with the quality of service uh, that they had hoped to be able to do. And they're working shoulder to shoulder with us to take that to a whole new level. Anyway, Citrix Cloud is not uh, Zen App Express running on Azure. Citrix Cloud, again, this is a, a back-end service. Uh, Citrix Cloud will be the control plane for those, the delivery of those apps running on Azure as well. Um, so you can consume all the, the different services that we've got. Control plane up in the cloud. But a key aspect here is that it's the control plane. So uh, if you remember back to my introduction, I pointed out how you know, Citrix, we, we came up with the whole any, any, any 
uh, message. That was our mission 10 years before, well, okay, probably uh, two years before VMware was even a company in the marketplace. Um, but I, I pointed out how any cloud, we've, we've uh, you know, a number of years ago extended that, so any cloud is part of the any, 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 any message now. So a key thing for us is that we, we realize that customers are in different phases of uh, their transformation. They're, they have different uh, budgetary requirements, compliance requirements, investments in existing technology that they can't abandon, uh, aversions to risk, uh, paces with which they, they move forward their infrastructure and their services. So a big part of our goal here and a big element behind Citrix Cloud is that we work very hard to be able to allow you to put your IP and your controls wherever you're comfortable doing it, right? So as you'll see here in a second, meeting customers where they're at in their journey with Citrix Cloud and helping enable their transformation uh, to the, the cloud economy is very key. So that means that you can leverage infrastructure in your own data center, things like the Dell, Dell Wise Appliance for Citrix. I'd stumble over that name a lot. Uh, so you can leverage platforms like that or the, the Dell XC platform on your own premise. You can leverage a public cloud. You could leverage a partner delivered and managed cloud. You can deliver, you can leverage those all side by side and deliver work, different workloads from those different clouds if you would like. The key there is that we're providing choice we're not taking all your data and all your apps and everything and forcing you to push everything up into the cloud, but we're leveraging the power and the capabilities of the cloud and all the capabilities it gives us as essentially a service provider to really raise the bar substantially. So I mentioned that with Citrix Cloud, our, our goal there really is to meet our customers wherever they're at in their transition to uh, the cloud. So for traditional employments, uh, we've got a bunch of services that we already deliver today on Citrix Cloud uh, that we are expanding extremely rapidly. I mean, we're talking there's a, a new release that hits of Citrix Cloud with news and updates and enhancements to the service on, I want to say our public release schedule is three weeks or four weeks. It's pretty darn rapid. Um, but for customers that have traditional deployments, uh, we're doing things with Citrix Cloud like insight services, where if you imagine uh, being able to leverage the power of the cloud and advanced analytics, data analytics, uh, and even a little bit of AI to look at an existing environment and then come back and analyze that environment, come back and tell you, okay, well, here's what we see in your environment. Here's the, the, the changes and fixes we suggest that you make. Um, so, we've got quite a few services that are already there uh, targeted towards helping customers extend their traditional deployments. And then as you move forward with the journey, so people that are looking at doing uh, hybrid environments where you've got your own data center but you're open to and you're starting to leverage the cloud a little bit more, uh, we do things, have services like Zen App and Zen Desktop delivered out of Citrix Cloud. Netscaler Gateway, so doing some of the networking out of the cloud. Uh, we've also done some very interesting things, and IoT is one of the core uh, things that you're going to see us adopt and do some great but very focused things uh, with in the future here. And as customers get into consuming more cloud-native services, getting out of the, the realm of managing their own infrastructure, we allow, we've, we've got services out there like a secure browser service which allows you to leverage a published browser hosted in the cloud, managed by Citrix, to deliver, securely deliver a web-based application, a web browser basically peering back into your infrastructure. Uh, and then of course we've got some of the, the services like our ShareFile, uh, Enterprise File Sync and Sharing application. So that service was born in the cloud. Uh, that's there, consumable, also can be plugged into uh, and present your local, so data that you've got on premise, local file shares, for example, SharePoint sites, documentum repositories, uh, things like that. And then moving forward, uh, you're going to see us continue to do a lot of innovation here. 
and deliver innovation on a very, very rapid, uh, rapid pace. So brokering other services, you're going to see us do some great things here with uh, single sign-on and uh, integration with other very popular, very powerful cloud services like Office 365, for example. So to kind of net this out, with Citrix Cloud, you're going to see us do some, some nice tight integration and leveraging of the services that we've got in Citrix Cloud. And we're going to raise the bar, improving the speed with which we can deploy this stuff, leveraging the power of the cloud to be able to keep environments, keep your, your systems evergreen, always up to date and current, uh, give you some of the advanced diagnostics that we can provide for you, give you some flexibility amp up the options for flexibility of deployment, and also security. So to kind of wrap this up and close it out, you know, you heard a lot this week about the new Dell, right? You combine EMC, you've got a, a world leading technology provider that's got just about every kind of product and technology you could need to run your business and transform your business. Um, powerful organization, delivers a, a, a lot of value moving forward very quickly. You got the refocus Citrix, who's all about the secure delivery of applications and data on a mission to connect people, organizations, and things in such a way that is secure uh, and allows you to focus on the things that are important. So you combine the two of those, what you're going to see out of us, and I, I can pretty confidently say this, as I'm, like I've mentioned, I'm in the middle of some of this uh, evolution and innovation. Uh, you're going to see us taking it up a whole nother notch. Um, but the combination of the two organizations and the products we bring to market, uh, you can confidently feel is a, a foundation for the delivery of the modern digital workspace. So keep your eyes on this space uh, as time moves along a little bit, and I think you'll be very pleased with what you come up with. So with that, that's the end of the content that I've got. So I guess on behalf of uh, Dell and uh, my employer Citrix, I'll thank you for your, your time and attention this morning. We'd be happy to stick around and answer some questions. Um, you can answer questions now in the open forum certainly. if you've got any. Uh, <clears throat> yes, sir. So the question was, is Citrix building our own single sign-on, or are we strapping on some of the existing ones? So if you take a look at uh, Netscaler, our networking technology, right? Uh, we had a, a few announcements. Netscaler has supported SAML authentication for the, the delivery. as an application delivery controller. Uh, it supported that for a heck of a long time. Uh, we had a release back, our 7.9 release, which was what, keep me honest here, Bernie, uh, May, June time frame? Yeah, somewhere yeah, around May, June time frame. We announced a, a technology for ZenApp and Zen Desktop called the Federated Authentication Services, which basically allows you to authenticate out in front of a ZenApp environment via SAML, and then we'll pass that through, clear through to a desktop. So what you're going to see us do is take both of those things to a whole new notch, but you won't see us write our own authentication service. We're, we're not going to become a, a, an, act, an Azure Active Directory, for example, or an Okta or anything like that. No sense in recreating the wheel. Yeah. You know, that may have been Citrix. Citrix may have you know, wanted to be all things to all people in the past, but we're on a mission now. We got some focus. We'll leverage the best of what's out there. Great question. Did I answer it effectively? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's technology near and dear to my heart. I haven't played with it a ton, but I'd be happy to have a little offline aside and get all geeky with you if you'd like. All right. Anybody else have any questions they'd like to share? Going once. Okay. Going twice. Thanks for your time. All right. Hey, thanks. Cheers. Thanks, everybody. Uh, we'll be around for a couple minutes if everybody wants to come up individually if you have any questions. Thanks for attending.